Okay, we've written another integral. We've got the integral from zero to a, natural log x plus a over x squared plus a squared dx. And I've actually created this condition on here that a needs to be greater than zero. Just, it kind of makes sense with this term being squared, the bounds and everything. And one quick note on this, just notice that this is the same thing as something called Surrett's integral, which I've done not too long ago. The only difference, so for Surrett's integral, it's gonna be a equals one, bounds going from zero to one. And then for this thing, we're just gonna do basically the same methods I did on this one, but just get a generalized solution for any a. So for my first step, what I wanna do is a trig substitution, just noticing the situation where we have x squared here. Let's make the trig substitution using tangent. I'll set x equal to tan of t. Let's take a derivative. So for the dx value, we're gonna have just a secant squared of t dt. And then let's also, while we're at it, let's get a value for t. If I divide by a here and take arctan on both sides, we can isolate t and we get t equal to arctan of x over a. So then let's go ahead and substitute. First, let's take a here and plug it into this equation. When you do that, you're gonna have a over a here or just arctan of one. Arctan of one, that's gonna happen at pi over four for our upper bound. Then you plug zero in, arctan is zero, that's just zero. Then for this numerator, we're gonna have natural log of this plus a, but let's actually factor an a out right away because that's gonna help. So factoring the a out, this is gonna become a tan t plus one. Then with the denominator, this is gonna become a squared tan squared t plus a squared and dx is going to be this thing, a secant squared t dt. And now this is actually starting to look more complicated than what we had, but we're making some progress anyway. Here, what we'll do, let's kind of try to simplify this. If I factor out a squared, we end up with a squared times tan squared t plus one, but tan squared t plus one, we have the identity, this is going to be the same thing as secant squared t. And so then, what we can do is we have a squared times secant squared t in the denominator, and we have a secant squared t in the numerator. I can take this, cancel this with this, cancel this with one of these. And then so when I rewrite this, we just, all this stuff's gone. We just need to remember we still have this a that I can bring up front of the integral. So doing that, this is in the denominator, so I'll write this as one over a in front. And then for this right here, when I rewrite this, we have multiplication here. We have a times this tan t plus one. So with log properties, I can actually break that up and write it as natural log a plus natural log tan of t plus one. But now here, because we're adding, we can just break this up into two integrals. So what I'll do for the second one is, well, actually we're gonna need a dt here, distribute in the one over a to this second integral, and then just rewrite. This is gonna be what we had before, this tan t plus one. But now for this integral right here, this natural log of a is just a constant, right? So we can bring that out front of the integral and then just integrate one and at least finish off this easy piece right here. So when we do that, we're gonna have natural log of a over a in front. Integrating one, that's just gonna be t evaluated from zero to pi over four. Evaluating this, first when you evaluate it zero, it's gonna zero everything out. So we really just need to plug in pi over four. So putting this together, this piece of the integral is gonna be pi natural log a over 4a. And so let's just make a note of this piece here and get this out of the way. So going back to our original integral, we'll say we have this part, we're gonna say at least it's gonna be pi natural log of a over 4a plus this piece right here. Let's just put a label on this integral so we can keep track of it. So for this right here, let's call this thing big I. And so we're saying our integral is gonna be equal to this plus whatever big I is, but now we need to work this out on the next board. Okay, now focusing on this integral over here, what I'm gonna to do to rearrange this is let's just use King's principle on this, which is gonna allow us to rewrite it, but then we're gonna change our input here. So we're gonna still have this one over A in front and our bounds stay the same. For this F of B plus A minus X value, we need to add the bounds. So when you do that, it's gonna be F of pi over four minus T in this case. So we'll just plug this in for t. We're gonna have natural log tan of pi over four minus t plus one dt. Then from here, let's focus on cleaning up this whole mess inside the natural log and see what we can do with this. 
So we do have the different angle formula for tangent and how that's going to work is we're going to have tangent of the first piece. We're going to tan pi over 4 minus tan of t. And then in the denominator, it's going to become 1 plus tan pi over 4 times tan of t. But tan pi over 4, this value is going to be 1. This value is also going to be 1, so that's going away. So what we have here is just 1 minus tan t over 1 plus tan t. But now for more simplification, what I want to do is let's bring in this plus 1. And what we can do is get a common denominator. So for a 1, I can write it as 1 plus tan t over 1 plus tan t like this. So we're not changing anything. And then with the common denominator, we have this all over 1 plus tan t. But then when we do that, tan t minus tan t, those are going to cancel 1 and 1. That gives me 2. But now before I plug it all back in, let's just notice this whole thing. This is inside the natural log, right? So we have this inside the natural log. What I can do is use log properties on this to break this up. We're dividing so we can write a subtraction. So I can write this as natural log 2 minus natural log 1 plus tan of t. And so now we can take this, put it back in the integral, but now we can break it on the minus sign into two integrals. So for the first one, we're going to have this 1 over a. Then we'll start with just integrating. This ln2 is going to be just a constant. We'll leave it like this for a minute. Then for the next one, we need to distribute in this 1 over a. So we'll distribute that in, get the same bounds, and then we're just integrating this. I'm going to change the order back and write it as write it like this, tan t plus 1. The reason I do that is just to notice that what we have right here is exactly the same as what we have right here. And remember, this thing over here is i. So this right here we're subtracting. We can say this is minus i. So what I want to do is just let's add i on both sides, add an i here. But then if we add an i over here, this becomes 2i. And then we can cancel out all this part. And all we're left to do is really just integrate this constant value. So going ahead with this first, again, we can bring ln2 as a constant. So we bring it out front of the integral. We get ln2 over a. This here, we're just integrating. Now we're just integrating 1. Integrating that, we get t. This is basically the same thing we did with this first one, really, right? Just with a different... Now we have 2 instead of an a, but anyway, we need to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 4. And I think before I evaluate, let's just get rid of this 2 to isolate what we want, our i. Divide by 2 on the other side, we have a 2a there. When we plug 0 in, everything's 0. So we just need to plug in pi over 4. And so for this piece, we're going to end up with pi natural log 2, 4 times 2, just 8 in the denominator. And now we have our value here. This is going to be our value over here for i. Okay, now in order to finish it off, all that's left is we just need to combine these two fractions together. One thing I want to do is let's get a common denominator. In order to get 8a in both of these fractions, let me multiply them by 2 here, multiply them by 2 here. Then what I'm going to do is come over here and let's factor out pi over 8a, because we have that in common in both. Then what's left is going to be in the first one, 2 ln a, plus in the second one, just ln 2. Then what I can do is I can bring this 2 into the exponent on the a. Then combining these, we're adding. So with log properties, we can bring it together. And so for my final solution, we just have pi over 8a, natural log 2a squared, and that's it. Anyway, the interesting problem. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.